the Lord God Almighty. Make his strength. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness welcome child of god to the gospel is the power i hope you enjoy the second part of our message today we have to understand we are welcoming demonic spirits into our life so we have to be willing to speak the word of god and to repent from those things and to keep them out of our lives. Yes, sometimes we mess up our own lives, sometimes circumstances. You need not make a mistake, the people around you can be messing up and you pay the price for it because of their mess up, it happens. But God will use those things together for good. But many times there is a demonic spirit. You know, when people have tinnitus ringing in the ears, that's a demonic spirit. People give medicine to numb it so you don't hear it. The, the spirit is still there. You've just dumbed it. You've dumbed your senses. You've, uh, you've made it so that you can't hear it. You can't feel it. But it's still there. We have to get rid of that spirit. Arthritis is a spirit. There are so many demonic spirits. That's why many times it's a spiritual issue, not a physical issue that we have to understand that we're facing. After oppression, there's what's called possession. That's when literally the demonic spirit's no longer out here, but it's within you. Again, nothing to be afraid of every day. You say, oh, I don't wanna tell him I've got a demonic spirit because I'll look like some monster. Let me tell you something, every day I wake up, Jesus, every devil in me, I cast it out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Anytime, God knows. My wife, that's why she's my compass, you know? She'll tell me when I got devils in me. I'm, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> we help each other. I, I gently suggest there might be an occasional one in her. <laughs> Which only came by my fault, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, I wanna help you get it out. But seriously, we've learned. You know, the devil will whisper one thing and it'll create, we, we love each other, we have the greatest marriage, but he'll whisper one thing, and all of a sudden you'll feel this agitation. And I used to chase her around arguing with her for the day because if I'm agitated, it must be coming from her. But you know what I've learned over the years? It's not her or me. It's the devil trying to drive a wedge in our marriage. And it usually happens, we, we now have noticed the pattern right before I get on stage at a meeting, that's usually when something happens, or when we're going to Africa to, to, to preach the gospel. So now we recognize it, aha. Uh -huh. That's not her, that's not me. That is the enemy trying to drive a wedge, wedge because if he can disrupt my spirit, I can't be thinking about messages and the power of God. Instead, I'm building up resentment, anger, frustration at my wife. So all of a sudden we both go into prayer and all of a sudden it's gone. That's what we have to understand. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. The, spirit, the, the Bible tells us that, Ephesians 6, 11 and 19. But against the principalities and powers of darkness. We hear it, we even quote it, we just don't believe it, we don't live it. So we have to understand. But then there's not only, there's not only oppression and possession, there's what's called foothold. With a foothold, that's a, it's a devil that's been in you for more than two years. When they came to Jesus and they said, your disciples, they can't cast this out, he, Jesus said what? He said, some come out by prayer and fasting. 
That's when they see me with these long 15-minute battles. You know, sometimes I feel so bad. God, where's the anointing, God? You said you'd be with me. It took me 12 minutes to cast out that devil. Then when I come into my right mind later, I say, Jesus, I would be destroyed by that devil. Forget 12 minutes. He would destroy me if you weren't with me. You know, those are ones that come out. That's why when we have meetings sometimes, and sometimes they'll come out in one minute, sometimes it'll be five-minute battle, eight-minute battle. It feels like forever when people are waiting, but I try to just love that person, and I encourage people to be patient because that person's freedom is right now. Jesus has been waiting for this moment to set that child free. Why is it that we should rush, that we should be bothered, that we have to go? We have to all be loving that person to see them set in freedom. There are many devils. You know, I always tell people, which by the way, this is for later. Even when I'm speaking, people will start shaking inside. You wonder if you have a devil in you? It's because, you know, we know the sons of Sceva, right? They said to the devil, come out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. And that devil came out and gave them a beating. But I want to tell you every day, I'm in front the throne room of Jesus Christ saying, I bind that devil, that spirit of unclean spirit, medium spirit, lying spirit, seducing spirit, false spirit. So again, this is me stepping away from the Bible for a second. So you know what's happening? Every day, when I pray tonight, those devils don't come out because I'm praying tonight. They're praying because I've given them a beating of their life by the angels. Every time, why God said what? He said, he said, I give you the keys to the kingdom, right? Well, if you tell a 16-year-old, I give you keys to the car, they're gonna listen up to what you say next. So when Jesus says, I give you the keys to the kingdom, what does it mean? It means, I've given you the keys to the kingdom, the kingdom of God is what? Love, joy, peace, righteousness. What God is saying is you have no love, you have no peace, you have no joy, because I've given you the keys and you're not using them. Who would ever give their keys to a 16-year-old and they won't take the car out that night? It doesn't happen. Right? All the 16-year-olds said amen. <laughs> All the parents said, oh my. I know. We got one almost there and one that's already there. Oh my. So, of course, he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom, Matthew 16, verse 19. What does that mean? Well, if the kingdom is love, joy, peace, righteousness, what is the key? What did he say before that? What is bound on earth is bound in heaven. What's loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. So here's what happens. God, for, for his own design, has combined our words because we are made in the image of God. And when Jesus Christ speaks, what happens? The world is formed, right? Hebrews 11, verse 3. So the world is formed into place. So everything is formed by the word of God. So it's also formed by our mouth. So God lets us speak in union with the angels of God. So when we say, I bind that spirit of fear above your head in the spiritual realm that you're not seeing, there is a spirit of fear and there's an angel of God by your side and he's begging, he's going, just give me the word. He's got a billy club and handcuffs. And the moment you say, I bind the spirit of fear, he bangs that fear on the head and locks him up for the day. We're in partnership with the angels of God. So what happens is when you walk around being attacked by the enemy and you don't open your mouth, that angel is frozen and cannot move on your behalf. So Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. What's bound on earth is bound in heaven. So what happens is every day, in the name of Jesus, I bind 300 devils. I bind the spirit of infirmity. I bind the medium of familiar spirits. I bind the spirit, the, the serpent spirit. So what happens is when the serpent spirit shows up in one of you in this room, already you're starting to shake, you know why? Because the devil in you is seeing Jesus in me, it's not me, it's the Jesus in me, and he knows for the last umpteen hundreds of days, I've been beating on him in the heavenly realms, and he's going, oh no, I know Jesus, I know Paul, I know David Turner, I'm in trouble. That's what's happening. We can all walk in this way, when we understand what's going on in the spirit realm, I used to think the life was all natural realm. Then I thought, oh, maybe it's 3% spirit and 97% natural. I'm telling you right now, from what I've seen in this world, it's about 3% natural realm, 97% spirit realm is what's going on. If we take authority in the spirit realm automatically. I remember my spiritual father. One day on my birthday six years ago, he declared to me, God has given you a farm. It is finished. You have it. And I'm looking around going, I don't see it. I don't have no, I don't have no farm. What are you talking about? 
But you know what's funny? About a year and a half later, the farm shows up. What happened is it had been, he was seeing it done in the spirit realm, and then he knew heaven and earth would move, whatever it took, whatever, but it was done. So sure enough, it showed up in God's time, but he was seeing it in the spirit realm. So the same way, when you're attacked with the demonic, your fight is not with the people around you, it's not with your boss, your coworkers, the other drivers on the road, your husband, your wife. Your fight is against the principalities and the powers of darkness because they can delay the promise of God. They can't defeat the promise of God, but they're trying to delay it in you, is what's happening. But when you join with the angels and you fight, when you fall at the feet of Jesus, then automatically the way is cleared, and you can get rid of the oppression, the possession, the foothold. Whatever it is in your life, automatically everything will start to move. Amen? I wanted you to understand that tonight. So we have to understand what we're seeing in people. We have to understand what we have. We have to understand it's not a shame. I know if I got something in me, I want my spiritual father to pray, get it out of me, because I don't want to live with it. I don't want to hide it. I want to be free in the spirit, right? When we say he, the sun sets free is free indeed. When we say where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. These are not platitudes to hang a beautiful plaque on the wall. They look nice there, but they don't do you any good. But when you put it in your heart and you start to live it and you start to speak it, that's when the kingdom of God comes in power. Mark 9 verse 1, Jesus said, amen? This man in the tombs, I knew we'd get back there soon. This man in the tombs, praise the Lord. We gotta take Uber to get back to the center of this message. <laughs> it's a long way down the road, hallelujah. But I wanted you to understand that tonight. There's no mystery, God has unfolded every one of these things. That's why Jesus said, Hosea 4 verse six, he said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Every one of these things he's put in front of us to understand. Every one of these things he's put in front of us to have the victory. But it's like, you're the quarterback of the team, you've been paid this big salary, you're on the team, but you never bother to read the playbook. And then we wonder why we ain't gonna make it on the field very long. Amen? It's all in the book. Hallelujah. So this man in Mark 5, Verse 1 to 20, when Jesus comes to this man, he's crying out in the tombs, he's in chains. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says that the God of this age has blinded the eyes of the unbelievers to the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what's happening is the eyes of even believers are being blinded to Jesus' glory and power. You know, everywhere I go, even people don't believe Jesus, they believe the devil. It's very easy for people to know, the devil, the devil, the devil. But when you say Jesus, they look at you like, what are you talking about? And that's Christians. We give too much glory and too much power to the enemy. We have to recognize he's there, we have to understand he's there, but our eyes have to be open to the power of Jesus, which is the greatest power, yeah. amen? Yeah. Colossians 1.13, it says that Jesus is taking us from darkness to the marvelous light. Amen? John 8, 36, it says, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. When we are set in freedom, we receive that freedom, we keep that freedom. We have the legal right. I'll always pray if you've heard me before, devil, I adjure you, you have no legal right. It's like a law room. It is against the law in the heavenly realm for a person, for the devil, to not flee when faced with the blood of Jesus. That's like, if you've ever played Monopoly, blood of Jesus is your get out of jail free card. Amen? Whatever you did to get in there, you might have picked the card, you know, community chest, you might have rolled doubles three times, but whatever reason you got into jail, blood of Jesus, you're out. Amen? So the devil, when we say blood of Jesus, that's the eternal contract that condemned Satan himself and declared that you're a child of God, he has no legal right. If he has no legal right, why should we stand? Why should we allow him in when he has no legal right? If you own your property and someone tries to take it from you and you have 
the legal rights to that property. Are you gonna let them come squat on your property and steal your land? You're gonna say to the court that you have no legal right. Well, tonight, when you have that in you, you take the devil to the legal court of Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, you are the righteous drudge. I hold up my ownership deed, which is called faith in you. By believing in you, I have the right to declare that I am a child of God, that I am saved, that I am healed, that I am delivered, and this devil has no legal right to squat on my life. I cast him out by the finger of God. And you believe it in your heart, it'll happen. Amen? By faith, we believe Jesus. He'll show us the mercy and we'll see the deliverance. Proverbs 11, verse 8 and verse 21. Proverbs 12, verse 13. This man, he was taking rocks and he was cutting himself. He was wounding himself. I've seen that when people have a certain devil, they actually, they're cutters, they cut themselves. Inflicting pain. This man is inflicting pain and he's cutting himself. But the Bible says, Psalm 147, verse three, Jesus came to bind up the wounds and heal the broken hearts of his people. Again, Isaiah 1, verse 6, it says, because of our sin, our iniquity, many of us, were wounding our own lives. But the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 30, verse 14, if you are being wounded head to toe, and there is no one to plead your cause, to stand up for you, come to Jesus, and he'll deliver you. Isaiah 53, verse four and five, it says that Jesus was pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, by his wounds we are healed. So Jesus was wounded to heal your wounds, amen? This man, he came and he ran and fought, fell at the feet of Jesus because he wanted to be delivered. I encourage you tonight, one of the biggest things, I'll fight for you, I'll pray for you, but you have to fight for yourself. You have to join, when we join together, the devil can't stand. If I'm fighting by myself, it takes longer. It'll still happen. But when you fight for your freedom in Jesus, you can overtake that enemy, amen? amen. This man fell at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus, he said to that devil, come out, evil spirit. You know, James chapter four, verse six, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. If paraphrased, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord, he will lift you up, amen? This is the time when he fell at the feet of Jesus. The Bible says, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says there's no name above the earth, below the earth, or on the earth that saves apart from the name of Jesus. That's why we have to call Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm telling you, everywhere I go, if I'm fighting with the devil and it's not coming out right away, all I have to say is the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, nails in the hands and feet of Jesus, and literally you'll see devils shrieking at the name of Jesus. They can't take it. That's, that's not a story. I see that everywhere I go. It's amazing, because years ago I sat in church and I read the things and it's like, oh, that's a neat story. It's real, I'm telling you today. When I'm praying, many times you'll see, my wife will tell you. I always say, if your wife's in the room, anything you say, everyone knows it's true, because if it wasn't, she'd stand up and say, no, it was two feet to the left. No, there were 122 people, not 124. So I appreciate that, because if she's here, I know you all know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> amen? All the married men said amen. <laughs> all the unmarried guys are like, what? You'll understand one day. <laughs> You'll think back to this moment. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yes, you'll all get a helper too. Praise the Lord. <laughs> One Flesh. We have a new marriage show coming out. It's going to be on TV, Jennifer and I. It's called One Flesh. It looks a little more like a three-legged race sometimes, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, it's One Flesh. It's, it's wonderful. Praise the Lord. So we have to understand Jesus 
Every knee bows at the name of Jesus. So this man comes and he falls at the feet. The man wants to be delivered, but the devil doesn't want to be delivered. But this is the time the devil said, I am legion, when Jesus said, what is your name? Legion means 6,000 devils. Imagine there's 6,000 devils in this man. I feel like there's a few I've faced that feel like 6,000 devils. 6,000 devils in him. You know, there were three prayers that day. The, the devil is saying, Jesus, what do you want with me? Don't send me away. Send me into the pigs. He's, they're begging to be sent into the pigs. You've got the prayer of the people in that town. They're so busy being consumed by when they, they go into the pigs and they go over the cliff, they had a financial loss. So they're praying, Jesus, depart from this place. But then you've got the man who was demon-possessed, cutting himself, wounding himself, just out of his mind in the tombs, alone and lonely. And he's begging, Jesus, let me follow you. Child of God, where are you today? Which one of those is your prayers? Is it the demonic that has control? Are you like the people you're more worried about your finances than the deliverance of God? And the perception of who people think you are instead of walking in the fullness of the freedom? Or are you like the one who's saying, Jesus, I want to follow you? This is what Jesus is expecting, that we follow him. That we get up, we get delivered, we get healed, we give him the glory. Isaiah 43, verse 7, we are called for his glory. Amen? It's not enough that we're saved. It's wonderful when we're saved. But we must wait upon God and then walk in power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. We must declare the work of the Lord. Psalm 118, verse 17. You will live and not die and proclaim what the Lord has done for you. When he delivers you, when he heals you, we must proclaim his glory. This man, he went through the Decropolis, it means 10 cities, telling all about what Jesus did. So that when Jesus came, he was known throughout those cities, those places. So many people came and believed Jesus because of this man. When we're delivered, when we're set free, this has to be our heart's cry. That's the only reason I'm here, that's the only reason I went. I saw the miracles of Jesus in my own life. It took it from a walk of believing and sitting in church and doing the right things to I know Jesus. He is the living God. I waited on him, I walked in his power, I declare his gospel all over the world. I am not an unusual one. I am no different than anybody else just taking up the word of God and walking in the fullness of what he has told us to do. Amen? So the same way, I want to tell you, child of God, that your deliverance, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, is here tonight. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, like this man, you might be lonely, wounded, it may be a depression. There are some people, when I speak to them, I travel all over, that have demonic where literally they're being, feel like someone's strangling them at night, like they're getting choked. There are some people that literally get held down on their bed like they can't breathe, they're trying to scream for help and no, nothing's coming out. You may be like that. The demonic in you may be a little less subtle. Some people, you just start shaking. If you're shaking tonight, you need to come up here tonight. It means the devil's already scared. He's about to lose his home. You need to come up if that's you the other night. There was one girl at our youth meeting here, and I walked by and she just started trembling. Right there, ah, that's it, devil, you gave it up. Now I already know you're there, we cast it out. She was delivered. We need not be ashamed. We believe and we'll see it, amen? So whatever it is, sometimes the enemy is speaking voices to you. Then we need to pray and get that out. I don't want you to make something where there's not. If you don't have it, that's great tonight. And we're gonna pray for a few healing things, but mostly tonight, people need to be set in freedom and I'm gonna see who that is. And we're gonna see that freedom come and the devils depart, amen? amen? But in your life, if you get migraines, that is a demonic spirit. If you're always fighting migraines. I pray people never see migraines again. Because I don't give them medicine to dull it. I cast the devil out. The devil never attacks them again. They never see migraines. Amen? Amen? So 
If you're not sure, there'll be a time I'll ask. And you can come and I could just, I'll tell you, no, you don't have anything. But it's not like, oh, I had one bad dream two weeks ago. That's not demonic. If, you, if people come thinking that, what happens is the enemy uses that. I call it throwing in shills. It's like there's so many people I got to get through to get through the ones who really need it that it actually deflects what's going on. So I want you to come when you really know you have the demonic. If you don't, like I say, oh, I had one bad dream. I just want him to pray for me. Hold off on that for a few minutes. Let others come. But when you know, if you live in constant fear, if you can't breathe, asthma is a demonic spirit. So many people I pray for, so they get instantly set free. All the years on inhalers and breathing apparatus, because literally it's a demonic spirit in your lungs. The moment I cast it out, all of a sudden people, you can breathe. People go, it's a miracle. Yes, it is a miracle, but all it is is a casting out of the devil, the demonic that has had his way with you. And this is the time tonight we say no more. Amen. The moment I've been, I was in a church in Boston Oh my gosh, there were so many devils and the pastor was scared to death afterwards because most of the devils were in the leadership of the church. And, <laughs> and uh, he co I come into his office afterwards. He's half excited, but he's going, oh my God, David, he goes, what do I do? I, I'm so scared, all the devils are in all my leaders. I said, pastor, the time for you to be scared was before when they had all the devils. Now they're set free, what are you afraid of? Now they can start to do the work of the Lord. And isn't that like how we are sometimes? When we have the sickness, we're not afraid. When it's gone, now we're afraid. Oh my God, where did that devil go? Well, I don't know, but let me just tell you this. He's not in you anymore, so you should be a lot happier. Amen. Praise the Lord. You gotta be careful. I used to say, people would, I went to a Baptist church and devils started coming out of people. They don't believe in that. And, uh, and they did after that meeting. They all started, I got hundreds of letters, people writing me, when those devils come out, where do they go? First few, I had fun when I got them. I said, to whoever's sitting in the back row. <laughs> but every time I go there, there's no one in the back. But then I started talking, I got a little more serious. I told them, actually, they come out of the people and they go, they go to my company in Phoenix, Arizona at Suntree which unfortunately was a lot of the truth, and then because I said it, it was definitely the truth. But uh, no, we send those devils straight to the feet of Jesus, never to touch you again. We have the authority, and you have the right as a child of God to walk in freedom, amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So be encouraged tonight because how Jesus came for this demon-possessed man in the tombs, the same way he's coming for you tonight, each one of you individually, whosoever needs to be set in freedom, you can have your freedom tonight so that you may become a witness for Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Make straight his path there.